Presenting next, we have Jay Gardina with Adamus One Corp. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Las Vegas. Hope you all leave the winner. Um, by the way, at the end of the presentation, we'll be on free samples for everyone. Okay, my name is Jay Gardina. I'm the chairman and CEO of Adamus One Corporation. We're the original lab-grown diamond company. U.S.-based, headquarters in Scottsdale, Arizona, manufacturing facility in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with lab-grown diamonds. A lot of people say, well, what's a lab-grown diamond synthetic? I know, very simple. It's a diamond. Physically, chemically, optically identical to a mine diamond. The only difference is one comes out of the earth, one comes out of the safe environment we call a factory. FTC in 2018 came out and said, look, a diamond's a diamond. Just like a cultured pearl still a pearl, as long as it has the same properties and optics, the end result is a diamond. That's what we do. So we own the technology. When we say we're the original lab-grown diamond company, through, prov through provenance we are. Why do we say that? So there's three ways to make a diamond. Mother Nature. HPHD, which is high pressure, high temperature, replicates what Mother Nature does. And then CVD, chemical vapor deposition. That's what we invented. Dr. Lernaris invented that process in the early 90s. He patented that process. We bought the patents and all those assets that he had manufactured and developed. Currently, we have 36 patents, 28 U.S., 8 uh, international. Or looking statement, blah, 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 a bunch of attorney stuff. Um, we're listed on NASDAQ, trading symbol is Jewel, J-W-L. We listed in December of 2022. Our website is adamus1.com. If you guys wanna download the presentation, go ahead there. I'm not a big go through the presentation. I'd love to go through the story on it. Questions afterwards, one-on-one -on -one meetings with CORE. You can talk to Tristan, Scott Arnold will be in as well. They handle all of our IR and scheduling meetings for the next couple of days. Again, we kind of went through, what, what is a lab-grown diamond? Again, physically, chemically, optically identical to a mined diamond. Why is it important right now? We look at post-pandemic, everyone's sustainable earth and sustainable mankind, right? How do, we, how do we sustain mankind by bettering and saving the planet, right? We're eco-friendly. We're a true ESG company. It's not just an optics ESG company. We are a true ESG company. The electricity we use, 98% nuclear energy very small carbon footprint, almost none. The water we use in our manufacturing facility, less than 18 gallons a year, we recycle it. We're not displacing earth, we're not displacing water, we're not just destroying the ecosystem, which is traditional mine diamond is doing, as well as everybody's seen the movie Blood Diamond. We're very socio friendly. I mean, you come in my factory, you're not gonna see 11 year old kid with a pickaxe and someone holding AK-47 to his head. So we look at, we're the, the better housekeeping seal of approval when it comes to diamonds, um, as well as we get a little more bang for your buck. Our diamonds have the same quality clarity as a mine diamond. We're not synthetic. We don't produce a perfect diamond. So we're not cubic zirconia or moissanite. We actually create a diamond, right? Same thing through mother nature, same aspect of it. GAA certifies our diamonds, IGL. We go through the same standards and qualifications as a mine diamond. It's just that in a retail essence, our diamonds are about 50% less in cost than a mine diamond. So if your budget's 3,000 for your anniversary ring, your kid's budget, whoever, 3,000, you have a choice. Either I can get the same diamond that it was mine for 1,500, or I can get double the diamond for 3,000, either better quality, larger diamond, et cetera. When we talk about our factory in Greenville, one of the best things we have in this industry, we're US based. We're one of the only US-based manufacturers. We're the only US-based manufacturers on NASDAQ. Um, say they are facility. Everything that we have is proprietary. Our reactors are proprietary. Our recipes are proprietary. Why does that give us a heads up in the competition? We have the ability to grow larger diamonds, better color, better clarity at scale, at a lower cost than anybody. Makes a big difference when you come to manufacturing. We're branding guys. You can look at my pedigree and history and resume. I'm, I'm pretty good at building brands and, and companies. There's no brand in this industry right now. No one resonates as the Cartier, Tiffany's, Louis Vuitton. There, it just doesn't exist. Majority of the companies, 98% are either Asian or Indian. 
not a lot of marketing in the United States. Currently right now in the United States, 42% of the retail sales of diamonds are lab grown. When we bought these assets in 2019, it represented less than 2%. Big growth, right? We look at the TAM when we first put out everything for our company, for the industry, it's four times what we expected. And that's just in jewelry sales. I don't know if you looked at the news last week and they said De Beers was partnering up with Amazon to create a technology-based computer chip with a substance substrate of diamonds. Diamonds the number one thermal conductor in the world. Almost five times more thermal, conducti thermal conductivity than silicon. Supercomputers, wave of the future, right? AI, as it starts getting its foothold, even though Elon Musk doesn't want it. We look at the wave of the future. So now we have the ability to do a chip substrate for thermal, you'll see first, and then you'll see the actual computer chip built out of lab-grown diamonds, three to five years away. We're in that infancy stage right now. We look at, from a company standpoint, our COO, Jerry Maguire, he was a 23-year C-level executive at Analog Chip. Gives us a good foot in the door to work on the technology sector. Low-hanging fruit for us is jewelry. And then we look at the big picture of we want to make sure that we, in parallel, make sure we continue R&D efforts for the, that resonate in the uh, tech and industrial sector. Again, just a quick breakdown of here's the different types of mining that traditional mining does, the benefits or the distractions and how it disrupts uh, the environment, continuing to define that environmental impact. I mean, it's, I don't want to sit here and go mine diamonds are bad, but reality is how many 25-year-olds you see go out by a fur coat right now? And it's kind of something of the past. We look at the same thing as lab-grown diamonds get a stronger and stronger foothold. It doesn't mean that if you're wearing a, a mine diamond and traditionally it was passed down generationally, you're not doing something wrong. It's just we offer an alternative we think is more socio and more eco-friendly as well as higher quality. Blood diamond social aspects kind of resonates throughout the world. 98% even though if you look at it, sorry, it'd be 72, 73% of all diamonds on the mine diamonds of the earth come from a conflict zone. Now Russia's adding to that, so it puts it at 92 to 95%, right? Supporting insurgencies, war loads, et cetera. So when we talk about what we manufacture, again, we go back on our patents. So we look at our patents, so we own the base patents. Anyone that's growing lab-grown diamonds by process of CBD is infringing our patents. Back. Anyone's growing anything over 20 microns thick is infringing our pens. We're not litigious. We're not going after people for infringement. But the reality is it gives us the ability to continue on in the processes that we developed and created. That as the patent wars continue to happen, De Beers, Cyp, Sued 2A, et cetera, we see WD and we see people starting to enforce their patents. We supersede and precede all of their patents. So we are Teflon. We can continue doing business. And down the road, in the long run, if people want to perfect their patent portfolio, they pretty much need to acquire us down the road. How's the process? How do we actually make a lab-grown diamond? I have unicorns. They make them. It's pretty easy. So who we look at, we start with what we call a diamond seed. I figure out the pointer on this would be great. There we go. Okay. There it is. There's a diamond seed. A diamond seed basically is a very small sliver of a diamond. And now we're using about 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter squares, about 150 microns thick, thickness of a postage stamp. We take those seeds, we put 50 of them within a reactor. You'll see pictures later on. We create what we call a plasma, right? It's like a miniature sun a reactor within the reactor. That plasma is three to 5,000 degrees centigrade. We infuse it with carbon-rich gas. CBD very simply is turning a gas into a solid. The carbon-rich gas rains down onto those seeds. Wherever the carbon lands on that seed, because again, we know the carbon can be soft as a lubricant or hard as a diamond. Soft substance, the hardest known to man. So where it sees, when it lands down on that seed, it knows how to replicate and build that architectural structure of carbon formation to build the diamond up. Each one of those seeds in a 30-day process becomes a five to six carat rough diamond. 50 of them. Our reactors right now, we're running at full capacity. We have 12 of those reactors running. We leased our new facility. Phase one of the new facilities, 100 reactors, and instead of putting 50 seeds on the plate, we are indeed now we put 100 to 110 seeds. Double our output, same amount of cost. So we continue to R&D to lower our cost, better our quality of diamonds, and lower the cost. 
as you see the growing process here, this is where the actual diamond is. This is what we call a polypuck. This is all the carbon that lands and doesn't have the architectural format to understand how to make a diamond. We grow in squares. After the growing processes, we take it out. We do a light cut here. We might do a 4P cut and then we send it off to our cut polishers in India. Just came back from India. Amazing to watch everyone hand, hand cut the diamonds. It's a, it's a very painstaking process and a true artisan process. And then we come up with our finished goods. So out of this five to six carat rough diamond, we cut the center stone. We're hoping to get about a one and a half to two and a half carat. Depends if it's a round brilliant or a square cut. Obviously the round takes up more because we grow in squares. And then the balance of the, of the meat of the, of the dot rough diamond, we can do little two millimeters melee, the stuff you see we make diamond and jewelry out of. Um, so we try to use as much of the, of the diamond weight as possible to continue to bring in revenue from it. Cost on the cube with certification, everything, let's say, on this cube might be $350, $400. Wholesale for that two carat diamond, somewhere between two and 4,000, depending on the clarity. We tend to bring out of the box a G or better color diamond. So DEFG, which is pretty much a white diamond and a VS, VS1 or better. So we try to make extremely high quality diamonds. Here's what a reactor looks like. So one of our lead scientists right here, like I said, we continue to do R&D throughout the, throughout the term. So we always want to better our process, better what we put out, lower our cost as much as possible. Talk about the CBD process. You can look down, here's our patents. If any of you would like to request our patent portfolio, we can do that as well. We have it broken down as what each, each patent represents um, specifically. Very big in the news, right? We look at when the FTC, like I said, came out in 2018, said, look at diamonds and diamond, it doesn't matter. So we look at the hurdles because prior to that, everyone in the mine diamond industry is saying it's a synthetic diamonds and you have to label a synthetic. 2018, no, we don't, we're a diamond. We're not a synthetic. So we broke that barrier. LVMH invested $90 million last fall in a startup company in Israel for lab-grown diamonds. Now we know Forbes magazine came out immediately and said, a lab-grown diamond is now considered a luxury item. As we see the pace and the tone going forward throughout resonates in everything, we know that people are looking to use lab-grown diamonds within all aspects of jewelry and luxury goods and non-luxury goods as well. Segment size, you can run through, look at the TAM, the growth of the TAM as well. Um, number of growers. So when we talk very simply, the current growers we have 12, let's say we only have 10 of those online. We do about a million to million two per month, top line revenue at a wholesale basis, about eh, 450, 500 in, in profit margins per month. As we transition over to the new factory, we build the, the reactors, like I said, they're proprietary. So we have three different companies or actually four that build different components. We assemble them in house. So it takes us the first six months, we get the first 26 and every month thereafter we get 13. So to get to our growth of hundred reactors, it's about 14, 15 months in reality. Um, so we've started that process already. So we're looking to grow our revenues, obviously associatively. We have those performance and models built out as well if you guys need to learn. Myself, here's a little bit our executive leadership. You know, it's always come down to the team. I've got a pretty good history and pedigree when it comes to being a public CEO and public entity guy. Steve Stair, very well versed, great resume as our CFO. Jerry McGuire, we talked about a little earlier with his, his pedigree at, at 23 years, C level executive at Analog Chip, as well as we look at our board of directors. My board of directors is you know, I really look at them, I lean on them for their network and we come out, we, we round table, you know, what's your problem? We got to figure out this. So we work together to probably come, come up with solutions, right? We're always trying to better the company, increase shareholder value, increase our top line, increase our bottom line revenues. As we're under infancy stage, infancy stage right now, we know what, here's our business plan. And now it's our job to make sure that we deliver A, B, C, D, and we keep going there. Our goal is to have a complete ecosystem, right? Why do we want an ecosystem? We don't want to be as dependent on other people, no matter what happens in this industry or doesn't. We want to make sure that we're as self-sufficient as possible. How do we do that? Through acquisitions, through growth, through development. So we look at, here's where we are now, where we'll be in 18 months from now or 36 is a completely different company, right? We look at, we're launching our high-end jewelry line. We call it El Jolie. So El Jolie, we technically, we're, if you look through the, our press releases. Adam Campbell is our jewelry designer, one of the top jewelry designers in the world right now. 
All of our packaging was done by the group that did Cartier's, Louis Vuitton packaging as well. So we look to be that high-end tier brand that no one's ever developed and done in, in lab-grown diamonds. We launched that September of this year, e-commerce, big influencer program with it. Matt Osborne's was leading up the pack on that. So we look at, we wanna make sure that we have direct-to-consumer retail, wholesale, and then we sell our roughs as well. So we wanna make sure that we're actively pursuing and aggressively going to all the different chains of distribution. Any questions here? You guys are making my life easy. Wow. No questions? So that's where we are right now, kind of as a company. Um, the industry segment we went over, the industry segment is growing, I mean, out of control. When we talk about the technology sector, um, we look at the computer chip sector as, as huge. Blades, saws, drill bits, those are already established. But now as we have, we start, start applying a more cost-effective medium, we get our costs even lower to deliver that, that expansion of revenue goes even further. So we don't look at direct acquisitions for lab growing. For me, it would be how do we get our process from seed to sale? And I want to make sure that we have acquisitions according to line, cut and polish. Our number one bottleneck right now is cut and polish. We send stuff off to India. My turnaround time slower. Um, so we want to make sure that whatever that step of the process is, we have as much controls as possible, right? Whether it's digital advertising, we'll partner up originally with digital advertising as we structure and push out our e-commerce, et cetera. But we want to make sure that whatever the acquisition that we do is accretive and it puts top line revenue, adds to our bottom line revenue or makes very more efficient use of our efforts through business. Did that answer what you needed? Okay. So we have all those forecasts built out. I'm here for one-on-ones for a couple of days. But yeah, I'm here for one-on-ones for a couple of days. They so wanted to, yeah, okay. Yeah, but we have we have all those built out and we look at, you know, combined P&Ls, like everything from A to Z. So we can run through that with you. This is fun. All right. Any more questions? Joe, you got any? <laughs> Who's your securities counsel? Joe Lukowski is actually amazing. <laughs> That's it? All right, guys. Thank you very much. Yes. So actually, it's not a, it's not a pricing structure. It's not a, it's not a pricing point. That's the issue. It's developing ways to dope the uh, chip, the substrate to the, to the chip. So the first thing you'll see is a thermal conductivity because it's a, a diamond. You can hold a diamond and push it through a um, ice cube. That's how fast it conducts thermal activity. When we take them out of the reactor, it's a thousand C. You can take that diamond, it sets down. Within five seconds, you can pick it up. It's less than room temperature. It conducts heat and thermal like that. So it's not an issue of cost because it's a cost effective medium. We don't have to cut and polish it. I don't have to worry if it's a pure white diamond or if it's what the color of brown or the tincture is. Our goal is to make sure that structure is identical to a mine diamond, right? So that's our goal for it. So it's, the costing isn't the issue. It's how to develop it to make sure that it meets the requirements of, of the technology demand, as well as you can actually adhere it and make it useful in the technology. That answer that? Okay, just checking. <laughs> I'm not, the, I'm not the real technology guy like Jerry Maguire, our COO, could really run through and go through A to Z, but this is based off our knowledge what we know. Anyone else? Perfect. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming. And then my buddy Dave will be handing out free diamonds for everybody. <laughs>